going on, you guys? Ross out the out here. Um, yeah, you're listening to the Net Out podcast. It's not quite nighttime. It's about twelve thirty in the afternoon here, Tuesday. And right, so like I said, there's been a lot of things I've been processing little by little. I'm like letting it kind of sink in, and as it kind of formulates a shape of some sort, it takes shape of some sort in my mind. I want to jump on and let you guys know what I'm thinking. So lately, I've been hearing a lot of stuff from people. Okay, maybe not lately. I've been collecting this input for a while now. Uh, people in Singapore tend to uh, shy away from actual relationships. They'd rather have something a little more casual. So Tinder's big over here as it is in Malaysia. And people like to hook up and then wonder why they're lost and um, lacking that connection that they've been seeking anyway. So a lot of people depressed, anxious, upset, just all around angry when it comes to love and relationships. And that makes me sad because love is meant to be freeing. It's not to, it's not meant to be cage-like, although that's how most people find it here. So I wanted to jump on and talk to you about what I'm starting to understand because it wasn't until I came across Breakfast at Tiffany's all over again, like this is how old now, right? So backtrack a little bit. I'm an Audrey Hepburn fan. I've loved her since Breakfast at Tiffany's and um, oh my gosh. See, now I can't think of any of the movies she's been in, but all of these sweet, sweet movies from 110 years ago, um, but they have a lot of life in them that is still relevant today. Even though the culture was different, the way people went about love and life was different, um, a lot of those same sentiments still appear again today. It's almost cyclical. It's come back to this place where people want the connection. They don't want the relationship. They don't want the obligation. They don't want to be tied down. It's all of those words that have like a really bad connotation, ball and chain, right? Um, Tied to somebody, tied down, Um, just these ugly, heavy words that are used to uh, describe relationships. So I wanted to kind of tackle that a little bit. And you will be catching me live tonight, Instagram with Avina Devi, my, uh, my niece, niece, cousin in uh, Malaysia. Uh, And we're going to discuss this a little bit more at length in, in person with people, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit now as well. So from what I saw, she was excited to be free and to live her life and just kind of, you know, go as the wind blows her basically. Um, This just this free spirit, lovely, lovely human being. And as beautiful as she was, not physically, obviously, I'm not talking about her physically, she was, but as a personality, the the kind of warmth she exuded, the excitement, the kind of lighthearted, carefree persona that she was, was very attractive to so many people. So she always had people in and out the house. She also needed her quiet time, but she really did um, get attached a little bit to her neighbor, which was cool because he was also having feelings for her. But the way that they came about, the way that they talked about their relationship was kind of interesting because in his mind, he thought that if he loved her, that she automatically belonged to him. And that wasn't the case. Obviously, that's never the case. I mean, I love my daughter. She doesn't belong to me. I'm responsible for her because she cannot fend for herself, but she does not belong to me. She's on borrowed time, okay? I'm, seriously speaking, that's how I feel about her in general. Um, I love her to death. I would do anything for her, but I understand she is on borrowed time. She has been lent to me by the universe to kind of help shape and mold her a little bit. And if she doesn't get what she needs from me, she's going to get it from somebody else. The universe will see to that. So in the meantime, I am responsible to make sure that she survives long enough to be able to, you know, share her passions with the world. So, okay, that was a side note on parenting. But when it comes down to it, when you love something, you do not own them. They don't belong to you. Yes, maybe you share a space together. Yes, maybe you share, you know, your path together for a little while. You walk together for a time. Hopefully it's the rest of your lives, but it's not always guaranteed, right? But you walk together, you live together, you experience together. It's meant to be this shared, beautiful life, right? But it's not always like that. People tend to have different ideas of what love is. And it really does come down to, okay, who was the first example of love in your life? Usually your parents. If you didn't have your parents, it was probably a grandparent or a godparent or somebody, some parental figure that gave you your idea of how love should look. And that could be healthy or unhealthy. But the point is they kind of shaped it for you. They started it off for you, right? Um, if you think back to your first grade teacher and your teachers from first grade all the way up until college, you probably have a few that you really did not like and some that you really loved and then some that you really respected. Maybe you didn't have the best relationship, but you realized that they were there for a reason. They had your best interest at heart and they were never easy on you, but they pushed you. So you have the good, the bad, the ugly or whatever. And the point being that 
they were there for a specific reason, to elicit a specific emotion, to, to help you grow in some, some kind of way. Same thing with love partners. When you look at who your first influences are, it kind of gives you an idea of the, 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 the framework within which you operate, the framework within which you've decided all your, the rest of your relationships will work. For a lot of us Tamil kids, we use the movies, right? Our favorite heroes, the favorite heroines, what their relationship was like. This is why a lot of us are kind of a little bit uh, about love because we're under the impression that the man should chase and chase and chase and chase while the woman is not interested. And finally, when the woman is interested, the man will walk away. I'm just going to leave that there. Um, but this is what I'm talking about, right? You are influenced by the things you see, the things you um, have access to, the information that you're able to to absorb. First things first, my parents. I watched my parents. Um, I don't have very strong memories of my parents at a very young age. Un- up until after the age of six, um, up until after. Sorry, let me start over. Until the age of six, it was mostly my grandparents and their idea of love. Now, my grandparents, obviously, they're from a completely different generation. They respected each other, but they were not very affectionate within the house. They didn't. They didn't show affection to each other. They didn't show affection to their kids. So I didn't see that, but I was affectionate. I was just naturally affectionate. So I would, I was a little clingy. Um, but after that, when I look at my parents, I realize also that they weren't physically affectionate. They weren't verbally affectionate, but they did things together. They threw parties together. They, you know, they had a, a big circle of friends. There were people in another house all the time. That was their idea of love. So within those two ideas, I learned that It's not always an affectionate type of relationship. It's not something that's always physically close, um, but you have like a mutual respect there. So it was one of those things where I learned or I felt or believed that if someone took the time to tell you off, it's because they cared because otherwise they could just shut up and not even pay attention, not even like, you know, acknowledge you, right? But that's not how love is. That's not what my idea of love is. And that's not how I show love now. That took a little bit of time and I had to kind of go through a lot of heartbreak to realize that that doesn't work for me. That's not who I am. That's not how I show love. And that's damn sure not how I want to how I want to receive love. So back to this idea of if I love you, you belong to me. That's a lot of old school belief that has never been questioned or tested. It's a lot of singular input from one specific source that hasn't been challenged by other people's experiences. So in that regard, I feel like a lot of people are stuck. Love is meant to be freeing. Love does not own anything. Love does not control. Love does not uh, manipulate. It does not... um, Oh, what are the words I want to use? I'm not even sure. But the point being that you should never feel like you're in a cage when you're in love. And I've had this conversation a lot more recently. And that's why I wanted to bring this up. I love people in general. I love them as they are. I love in such a way that I want you to feel supported as long as you're not out to hurt yourself or hurt other people. Now, if I see that you're tending towards hurting people as in like lashing out or yelling at people or showing your temper or if maybe you're hurting yourself by self-inflicting harm, these difficult thoughts that you continually condemn yourself with, I'm going to step in and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to try and dig to the bottom and see, okay, well, where is this coming from and who told you that these things were, were true for you to repeat them to yourself? But the point being that my purpose in loving you is to help you feel good about yourself no matter where you are, no matter who's around you, right? So that you could really reach for the stars and actually hit what you're aiming at. But most people don't seem to understand that. Most people do not have the same idea of love that I have. And my idea of love has evolved over three decades, right? I have been through so many situations and so many people that come and go. I've had separation anxiety and I've had attachment issues like, I can't even explain it. But the point being that I have been tested. My beliefs have been tested and tested and tested to the point that I realized they did not serve me. I had to get rid of them and get new ones. I had to find what felt good to me and then live according to those beliefs instead. Because as you know, beliefs equal your actions, equal your thoughts, equal your behavior, all of that. So it comes from your beliefs. What do you believe is true about the world around you? But when it comes to love, it is not about controlling. There is a beautiful saying that says, if you, um, if you like a flower, 
generally you'll pluck it. But if you love a flower, you will tend to the flower and you will make sure that it blooms and grows and continues. You will not, um, what is that word? Take it for yourself so that no one else can enjoy it. It's not that situation. If you are with somebody, it does not mean that you're only with that person. You have to cut off all ties with the rest of the world. That's not how love works. Love is meant to be shared. Love is meant to be freeing. Love is meant to make you feel like, okay, you know what? I don't need any of these masks that I've been carrying. I don't need any of these disguises that I've created to be able to blend in with the world around me. I can be me because this place is safe and that person accepts me. They will encourage me to be as great as I possibly can, but they're not there to control me or put restrictions on me. Another aspect of this I want to talk about is the fact that in a relationship, people feel obligated. Suddenly it's like, okay, my behavior must change because now I'm in a relationship. Okay, in some sense, yes, it does change a little bit. You're not meant to still go out and flirt with every person that comes by because now you're with somebody. You need to tone it down. You, your, your intention should not be to go catch somebody now that you're with somebody. Does that make sense? So the idea being that, yes, your behavior changes a little bit, but not all that much. You do not isolate yourself because you're suddenly in a relationship. You do not stop doing the things that you love because you're suddenly, suddenly in a relationship. Case in point, I've had so many girls that tell me, you know what? I used to go to the beach all the time. I used to wear clothes that, you know, made me feel sexy. So sometimes it's revealing, sometimes it's not. I felt good about the way I was when I was single. But suddenly when I got in a relationship, I had to change all that because I had to cater to the insecurities of the person I was with. Now, in boy term, in boy speak, that isn't, that doesn't extend to the way you dress. Usually you continue to dress the way you've been dressing, but it does change the way you behave outside, like outside of office hours, right? Maybe you went to the club, maybe you went drinking with your boys all the time, and now that you're in a relationship, you can't do that anymore. Or so the idea is. Maybe you can't drink as often as you used to. Maybe you can't um, sit, uh, hang out in certain circles because you know people still don't understand that boys and girls can be friends and not have any other like underhanded notions or ideas because you're catering to the other person's insecurities but the point being that if you're in a relationship not much of that should change obviously you let people know you're in a relationship but most most of your behaviors should generally remain the same uh, another example of feeling like love is a cage is Let's say you're dating in a complicated situation. Maybe it's not a single person or a single, uh, two single people. Maybe it's somebody who is um, a little more experienced than you are, meaning to say they have a past, whereas you might be brand new at this is your first relationship, but the other person has a little bit of a past, which also means that they have some baggage. They have some healing they need to do, and you are going, because you love this person, to adjust as much as possible to help them heal. Let's say they have specific experience with a narcissistic personality in their past, meaning to say that they've always had to um, change their behavior, cut off everyone that they've been around, and they've basically been made to feel paranoid about their actions because the narcissist will always question their intentions, their actions, their motives, the people that are around them. So you get into this relationship with this young person who has unfortunately been in a lot narcissistic relationship before, and their paranoia transcends to you. And of course, here you are, hey, I love you. I want to heal you. I want to help you get through this. How can I modify my behavior so you feel comfortable enough to be yourself? But if you modify the behavior, are they really learning? Are they really being put in a situation where they have to deal with those things? No, you're continuing the cycle. You're continuing the pattern. And that may feel like a cage to you because suddenly you can't be yourself. You've had to minimize yourself a little bit so that they don't get offended and they don't feel the paranoia and they don't have flashbacks of the last relationship that they were in. But vice versa, the person who has been there, who's had a, you know, a, a bit of a, a past history, some heartbreak and stuff, they are measuring you by the same stick that they had to measure the narcissist with before because they know that pattern, they understand that pattern, they don't always come into a new relationship with no expectations or a blank slate. So they also may feel like they are doomed to repeat the same mistakes over and over. So in this regard, I don't feel that that is actually love. Love has no conditions. Love loves because it can not because they want something in return. This is not a business relationship. I don't give you something so I can get something in return. This is not, you know, um, 
you go to a specific person because you want sex and then you just, you know, come off and live your life however afterwards. The point being that love is given because you want to give love. It's the idea that if you feel something, you say it in that moment because you feel it. If you feel like you love somebody, tell them you love them. If you feel like you miss somebody, tell them you miss them. If you feel like, you know what, I would do this for you and I have no problem doing it. It's not because I need something in return. I'm doing it because I want to for you. Um, an example in my life, I guess, if I'm interested in somebody, I'm going to make room for you, which means I'm a single mom, right? My uh, baby girl lives with me. Baby girl goes to school. Um, she's going to be here at night. So if you want to be around me, you're going to have to deal with the fact that she's going to be around. You're going to have to get to know her at some point. Um, I can't drop everything and run off to be with you whenever you ask for it. I am going to make room but I'm not going to expect you to hold up your end of the bar. There's no like, there's no conditions on the way that I love. But people will see it that way because suddenly I'm a girl with baggage. I have a child. I have a divorce. There is a certain stigma about Indian women who have been divorced and have children and are doing things by themselves. There is a certain idea that, you know, women of my age should be at a certain level in their life. They should have you know, the career sorted out, they should have the house sorted out, they should have their husband and the child, like all that stuff should be sorted out. But that's not the way life is. Life is messy. So in that regard, anyone that even would dare to think that they might even want a relationship with me is going to have to jump through a couple hoops because my life is a little complicated. But that doesn't mean that I'm expecting them to do all these things or to reduce their life or to change their worlds to be with me. I will change what I can. And if you come through, great. And if you don't, whatever, that's fine. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to do it because I want to do it to give you space to be there. I want you to be a certain level of comfortable. And that's going to push me to grow as well and, and come out of the, the hurt and the pain and the trauma that I've experienced in relationships before because I need that in order to wholly heal myself. So... Generally speaking, love is meant to be freeing. Love is not meant to be a cage. And I think that's part of the reason that a lot of people don't want a relationship. They'd rather have something casual and then have to deal with the consequences of not having a real connection, not having the ability to come back and talk to those people again because it was supposed to be a one night thing or one stand thing, right? But how is that love? I think we're missing the point of what love is meant to be because our belief about what love looks like skewed by our own relationships, skewed by our parents' relationships, skewed by the family members and the media and the movie industry, we've never actually sat down to think about what love is meant to look like. So if you have time, please join me live at 10 p.m. Singapore Standard Time uh, tonight live on Instagram. My girl, uh, my my cousin Avina will be on with me. We're going to take your questions live because I really do want to know what's going on in your head about these things. And let's talk about the fact that love is not meant to be a cage. Love is meant to be freeing. And no, you don't own people when you love them. You love them because you want to and they love you in return because they want to. There is no expectation that they will love you back. Okay? And yeah, let's discuss. I can't wait. So you guys, thank you so much for listening. I will catch you again soon. But in the meantime, you know where to find me, the Night Owl Podcast, um, pretty much every day. Check me out on Spotify. Check me out on YouTube. Catch me live here on Facebook. And if you have any questions, as always, please drop them in the comments and I will get to you as soon as I can. Thank you.